Good morning guys and welcome back to the course. Now in this video, we will introduce a new type of optimization problems and this type is called the transportation problem. From its name, what is transportation? It means that I'm gonna transport some products from its origin, from the sources to uh, their destinations, uh, which are their sinks or their warehouses. And I know that if I need to transport some uh, products from the sources to the warehouses, I'm going to need some cost. And this cost is the shipment cost. So in this type of problems, I'm not going to maximize my objective function because it's not about the profit. It is about the cost. So I need to minimize the shipment cost from the sources, the plants, to the destination, that is, the warehouses. So basically, I'm going to end up my, uh, my problems by uh, drawing, let's say, uh, the tree where I'm going to transport, let's say, 250 tons from this plant, from the source, to this warehouse, and so on. So how to do this and how to meet all the demands of uh, the warehouses while maintaining the capacity of the plants. So this is called transportation optimization problems. And let's take an example. So in this example, guys, I have some plants, so one, two, three plants, and I have one, two, three, four warehouses. For each plant, I have some capacity that I cannot exceed. So I know, for example, that for Dublin plant, I only have 120 and some scale, let's say 120 tons of products or 120 units of product that I cannot exceed. And at the same time, for each warehouse, I have such demand that I need to satisfy. For example, Chicago here has a demand of 47 tons of this product or 47 units of this product. So I need to satisfy this demand, but at the same time, I'm going to maintain some capacity. So all my products uh, produced must be less than this capacity while fulfilling the demand of each warehouse. How to optimize such problem using Excel and Lingo? Basically, guys, if I take a look to this table, I'm going to see here some numbers. So what are these numbers? These numbers are the cost of shipment from the plant warehouse which means for example if i take the second row the second column which is here 990 this is the cost of shipment from dublin to teaneck per one unit scale of my problem so let's say if my problem has a unit scale of tons this means guys that i need 990 dollars per ton to be shipped from dublin to teaneck if it is per unit of product, this means that I need $990 to ship this product, let's say this car, from Dublin to Teaneck. So guys, I need to minimize the shipment cost, and this is my objective function, while fulfilling all the demand and not exceeding the capacity. This is the transportation problem. How to do this? using Excel and Lingo. We will start now by Excel and then in the next video we'll solve it using Lingo. Now before solving the problem, I'm gonna need a mathematical formulations. So let's formulate this problem. Basically guys, my decision variables and this will be the first step in formulation should be the amount of products shipped from the source I, which is here the plant, to the destination J, which is here the warehouse. So basically, guys, I'm going to call this XIJ. So XIJ is the amount of products shipped from plant I or from the source I to the destination j and in this case guys of course this r should be small 
And in this case, I need, guys, to indicate the number of plants and the number of destinations, all right? Because I'm going to use them uh, later on. So I'm going to assume in a general. So I'm doing now the formulation of the general transportation problem. So it is valid for any type of transportation problem. I'm going to assume that this i is going from 1 till the number of plants. So n will be the number of plants, which is here. How many plants do I have? 1, 2, and 3. N is the number of plants, and M is the number of warehouses, all right? So I have one, two, three, four warehouses, all right? So and here in this special case is a three, and M is four. So in order to formulate it in a general form, so for any type of transportation problem, I'm going to keep this in N and m so this is my first step i know that if i want to do the optimization uh, uh, this should be one the first step ever is to find the decision variables now the second step is what the second step basically is to find the objective function i know that here i'm concerned about the shipment cost which means that here i'm concerned about minimizing the objective function. So I should use minimum instead of maximum. Minimizing what? What should I minimize? I should basically minimize the shipment cost from the plants to warehouses. And I know that these cost, costs are presented in this table here. But I know that this cost, let's say 250, is per unit scale of product. So I need to multiply each cost by its corresponding number of products, which is XIJ. I need to multiply XIJ by CIJ, where C is the shipment cost. And then I'm going to add them all in order to find the total shipment cost and minimize it. Which means, guys, in fact, I want to do the minimum of what? Of 250 times x11 plus 420 times x12 plus 380 times x13 plus 280 times x14 plus 1280 times x21 plus and so on until reaching the last one which is here 1730 times what times x34 so basically guys i'm doing the sum over i and over j which means here i need to use the sum so insert equation the sum of what the sum over i going from 1 till the number of plants and with another sum of the warehouses where j is going from 1 till m and then times what? Times x i j the cost c i j. So this should be minimum. All right, guys? So it is basically... Thus, the overall shipment cost, which is XIJ, CIJ, over all the plants and the warehouses. Of course, here C stands for the shipment cost. Now, I precise the decision variables. I precise the objective function. Now, what should I do? I should precise what are the constraints. So, if I go back to the table, what are the constraints here? I know, guys that the capacity of each plant is written here in this column which means guys for each plant or for each i because i stands for the plants so for each i i have a capacity of 45 so you can take Whatever you want from this I to the warehouses, which is J, such that the total number of this product should be less than 45. So the quantity, the maximum quantity is 45 because, in fact, this is the capacity of this plant I. 
In other words, guys, what does this mean? This means that I need for each I, which is which stands for the plant, I need that the sum. So I'm gonna also do the sum over what? Over J going from one till M of what? Now here I'm not concerned about the cost. I'm concerned about the quantity of X I J should be less than what? Less than or equal to what? To the capacity of each plant. So it should be less than or equal to cap I. Okay, so this is the capacity of each plant. So is this clear? I'm doing the sum over all the warehouses for each I so that this XIJ, the number, the total number going from this plant to all over the warehouses is less than the capacity of this plant. So this is for each I. Now what I'm going to do is the same but for the demand. So I have another constraint which is here the demand. Now in the case of demand, I have to say that the number of products in this warehouse must meet this demand or it must satisfy this demand. This is a must, guys, which means, guys, I should make sure that the number of products for each warehouse, let's say this warehouse, the first warehouse, is greater than this one so that I'm sure that the demand is satisfied. All right. So basically, guys, now here I have for each J, the sum all over the plants must be greater or equal to the demand of this warehouse or of this J. All right. So it is the opposite. Right. So if I take this and paste it here, this will be the constraint for. So for each J, I is going from 1 till N. Now you can flip N and M because you know that the number of rows of a matrix stands for M and N is the number of columns. It is the same. So here, guys, this, this should be greater or equal to what? To the demand at this J. Right? So basically, this is the mathematical formulation. And these are the constraints, the objective function, as well as the decision variables. Now we can solve it on Excel or on Lego. Thank you.